Okay, so this is just a short video I've been wanting to make for a while now, talking about which language on earth has the worst spelling. Specifically, Josh from Native Lang claims that Tibetan has the worst spelling in the world. Well, I'm here to say, if Tibetan is the current reigning champ, then I think Mongolian, when written with the traditional script, as is still done today in northern China, might have a good shot at taking the crown. Now, I'll try to keep this bid fairly self-contained so you don't have to have seen Josh's video, but if you want to see a more direct response to his video, I just uploaded one along with this vid and I'll leave a link in the description. Now disclaimer here, I have studied Mongolian far more than I have Tibetan, but I mainly write Mongolian with Cyrillic, which uses completely different spelling rules. So yeah, I'd say I'm about equally uninformed on both of them. Anyways, let's kick things off. First, let's examine Tibetan spelling. What makes it so tough? Tibetan spelling rules are actually fairly few and far between, and could easily be summed up within a few pages. The problem is how overarching they are. For example, it's not just alveolars that become retroflex when followed by an R in the script. All stops become retroflex when followed by it. It's not just prefix consonants that go silent, but superscript consonants, secondary suffixes, and even the subscript W. This leads to situations where any particular syllable could theoretically be spelt any number of ways, which, as you can probably imagine, could be a total nightmare when trying to remember how to write a word. But it's not that bad for the reader. After all, as I said before, simply remember a couple rules and you're set to go. Traditional Mongolian spelling, on the other hand, is a whole nother ball game. Let's start on the most basic level, the writing systems themselves. Tibetan is written with an alpha syllabary, in which each letter is written separately in syllable blocks delineated by dots. Mongolian, on the other hand, uses letters connected together in a manner superficially resembling Arabic, with letters changing depending on where in the word they are, though underneath it all, it is still just a simple alphabet. The the main issue comes from the fact that unlike Tibetan, in which every glyph represents one sound, though the sound can change depending on the surrounding letters, in Mongolian, many glyphs represent two, three, or as many as four different sounds, often with no way of telling which one to use in which words. Even in this bid, for many of the Mongolian words, I've just simplified and only transcribed the intended sounds, otherwise you end up transcribing words like this. But this isn't the end of the problem with Mongolian glyphs, there is also the issue that whereas Tibetan glyphs are all entirely unique and distinct from one another, in Mongolian, many glyphs reuse shapes from each other. This isn't necessarily a problem. After all, Chinese characters work in a similar fashion. But since all letters are connected linearly when written, this means that just from looking at a word, there is often no way to tell what the letters are, leaving you as the reader stuck scratching your head, guessing if you don't already know this word's spelling. I mean, seriously. Sure, words like sitrum may look nasty, but memorize a few rules and you'll always be able to read it. No amount of rules is going to be able to tell you how to pronounce this without just memorizing it. So yeah, as you can see, Mongolian is far worse for the reader. But we're just getting started. We've only talked about the letters themselves so far. But what about the spelling itself? We've already seen the problems with Tibetan spelling, but what about Mongolian? Well, never fear. It's terrible too. If you've already seen my video on Mongolian, you may be familiar with one of the main changes that happened in the shift from Middle Mongol to Modern Mongolian. If not, I'll summarize here. Middle Mongol was a fairly standard language when it came to the distribution of vowels. There were of course some rules as to where they could go, but for the most part, vowels were distributed fairly randomly within words. This all changed in the transition to Modern Mongolian, with all non-initial short vowels being deleted and the non-phonemic extra short mid vowels being epithetically reinserted at regular intervals to break up all the illegal clusters that were formed. See where this is going yet? When written in the traditional script, nearly none of the non-initial vowels in any given word have any bearing on the modern pronunciation, meaning a word like sult could be spelt like this, or this, or even this. And that's a fairly short word. Any guesses on how to spell this monstrosity? All this together means that not only is Mongolian shit for the reader, but it's also a pain to remember how to write it. And of course, that's just the nastiest parts. Mongolian also has a myriad of other smaller spelling rules and irregular spellings, just like any other language. The cases in many of the conjugations in particular have their own spelling rules completely unique to them. So, uh, yeah, that's fun. Anyways, so in the end, which is worse? I mean, to be honest, it's pretty close in my opinion. 
I mean, sure, as a general rule, Mongolian is way worse for the reader, but, like, Tibetan is truly abysmal for the writer. And, like, I didn't go into this too much, but Tibetan does have an absolute ass ton of rules. They'd only apply sometimes, or just flat out irregular spellings. So, yeah, it is, in my opinion, a close call. If you've any experience with either of these languages, or even if you have an opinion just based off this and Native Lang's video, feel free to mention it below. And, yeah, that's that. Thanks for watching. Once again, if you would like a more direct response to Native Lang's vid, I do go into that more in another video i just uploaded link below and yeah i'll see you next time where i don't know what i'll be doing exactly but it'll probably be language related